With Rob Lewis and Austin Price, Brent Hubs, VolQuest.com. Time for the Blue Water Climate Control VolQuest.com podcast on this Tuesday morning. As uh, we have plenty to get to, don't forget to check out our good friends at Blue Water Climate Control. Check them out online at BlueWaterClimateControl.com. You can find them on Twitter at BlueH2O underscore climate. You can uh, book your appointment online. You can get all of your HVAC needs from our friends at Blue Water Climate Control. Whatever your need is, if it's a repair job, you need a new system, you just need your system um, evaluated, you just need a cleaning, whatever you need done, they can handle it for you at Blue Water Climate Control. All right, let's jump right into things here. Uh, camp season Austin is officially underway. Rob, it's officially underway in, in both football and in basketball with visits and camps uh, around the country. Let's start with some football stuff. Austin, give me your assessment of Tennessee's football camps the first week in terms of who they've had in, what you think they've found, what you think they've got done, uh, just kind of an overall viewpoint of, of Josh Heupel's first week of football camps. Uh, I think it's been solid. Uh, here's the deal. Well, I was having this conversation with multiple people, uh, you know, on Monday. The way that, and I told you this over the weekend, the way the way that recruiting is going, like nobody is going to camp in the current class unless you're trying to pick up, pick up a certain offer from a certain school, you know, or you just don't have anything like Isaiah Horton was not going to camp at Tennessee. Cam Miller and Cam's a little banged up is not going to camp at Tennessee. You know, when most of these, you know, schools or like Barry on Brown went down to Georgia, don't think he camped there. I don't think Barry on Brown camped at Auburn, but he camped at Alabama, you know, or I actually officially visited Alabama. But like the point is, is like, when you're trying to get certain things, you can't. Mostly, it's turning into 23s and 24s. Next year, it'll be 24s and 25s, and the 23 or the you know, the 23s will not be camping. Just kind of is what it is. It's the way recruiting is going. So they've done a good job with the 23s uh, and the 24s, getting them to campus, having them camp, kind of working with them, seeing where they're at, seeing who they like, who they don't like, and uh, going from there. As far as 22s. Just don't expect many of them to come camp. It is kind of is what it is. I mean, the ones that are camping, you know, are trying to earn something they currently don't have, which is an offer or whatever. Do you think there's some 22s that are on the cusp of potentially being able to, to earn an offer? Because we've, I mean, I, we, we've seen the 23s, okay? We, we've seen some of that. And, heck, we see, we saw a rising ninth grader get an offer this weekend. So He wasn't it, your normal rising ninth grader. I agree. Grader. I agree with that. I'm, I'm not saying that he's not. But my point is – I they, they, to ask AP what that kid looked like. And I'm sorry to interrupt. But I'd like to oh, a million that. dollars. Well, Paul, you know, Paul's there to watch Markel, and this kid walks by, and Paul's like, who is that? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, but he looks like a million dollars. He's bigger than Markel. He's thicker than Markel. And wow. Markel's a big kid. You know, yes. Markel's a big kid, six four. You know, and uh, and up. so, so this kid starts running routes and stuff, and uh, and one of the guys walked by and said, "Hey, we just offered him." I said, "You did?" Because I'm thinking this kid's a twenty two, maybe a twenty three. Uh, and they're like, "Yep, he twenty five, man." I was like, "Twenty five, what?" Like two thousand twenty five. I'm like, he just graduated from middle school. Holy crap, he's massive. I mean, like, and of course, Paul's like, shouldn't he be working out with the defensive lineman? That's how kind of big he was, but he was running like a gazelle. Um, yeah, Cameron Sparks is his name. He's from the ba yeah. Baylor School, 6'3", 205 pounds as a rising ninth grader. So not your, t not your typical ninth grader, uh, that, that's for sure. Uh, was an impressive-looking athlete, uh, without a doubt. Back to your original question. Yes. I think the center at Ravenwood has a real shot to be a guy that earns an offer over time. I mean, you, you, when you look at, at, at the job he did uh, you know, on Friday night uh, at night at Neyland, Brent, he was really, really good and, you know, was nasty, was mean. Will Hester, his high school coach, you know, had really kind of, you know, been pushing, you know, him on me the last you know couple of months like hey Tennessee's going to get him up there and they're going to wish they'd have offered him sooner this kid is mean he's nasty they're going to say he's too short but he's not and you know he was really good it certainly was Carter Miller at uh, yeah, Carter Miller almost six foot two 273 pounds 
Rob, when you watched him on, on Friday night, uh, he was, to me, by far the most aggressive offensive lineman that was in the pool uh, of campers that Glenn uh, Ellerby was working with. He looked like a kid that was trying to make an impression. An impre like he came there, you know, with a mission. Yeah, he certainly had the – it felt like he had plenty to prove, had a little chip on his shoulder, That that's for sure. Um, and we'll see if anybody else lands an offer. Um, and, and we'll see, too, you know, what happens with some guys who – um, you know, is Tennessee cool on some guys in the 23s and 24s? I think that's only natural. We've talked about that a million times on this podcast. It seems like that this month would be a real, it would be a different type of evaluation because you just hadn't seen kids in a couple of years. So, so what does a guy look like from his freshman year camp to getting ready for his junior year or, or whatever the case may be that way? Well, yeah, I'm, two, I'm, two, a couple I'm guys that I'm going to be looking at, you know, potentially down the road. And we'll see where Tennessee is. Tennessee's got kind of their one tight end they're taking. But if, let's say, Ohio State came after Brody Foley, I think Jackson Long showed this staff enough to where they would be really comfortable with him now. Maybe where they weren't comfortable with him six weeks ago. You know, I mean, I think, you know, Markell's a guy that Tennessee's going to continue to evaluate. Because our recall system to, to Paul, we don't want to put too much pressure on that. But at the same time, like they, he he camped really really well, Brent, and, and tested well. Um, you know, I I think Tennessee will continue to look uh, that direction. I think Tennessee will continue to evaluate a guy like Tommy Winton at Knoxville Catholic, who I thought did a really nice job on Friday. Are they going to offer right now? No, they're not. But you know, could you see him if he had a really strong start to his senior year at Catholic and put some stuff on tape? Um, you know, maybe look at that direction if all the receivers didn't fall their way, you know, potentially. I think Tom, Tommy, honestly, is a running back or a defensive back more so than he is a wide receiver. But, you know, he camped well here, and then he went down to the FSU mega camp and camped really well as well. Yeah, he's got to stay healthy, and I'll see how the new offense goes for him at Catholic in terms of how they use him because I, I don't see him as an out wide guy in college for sure. So does Catholic use him out wide, or do they move him into the slot, play him out of the backfield and do some different things that way, Rob? I just wanted to say one. You mentioned evaluations, like Tennessee might cool on some kids, or you know, decide they like some. I tell you, I mean, we've talked a lot about how this was kind of a guessing game with twenty threes, especially one guy whose <laughs> whose evaluation looked spot on is Marcel Reed, the quarterback. He he I, I, he was really impressive. I thought polished for such a young kid. I know we, we wrote about it, but I just went. I had a chance to talk with him, and I know it's crazy early. He's not been anywhere. But I think he genuinely liked what he saw from, from Josh Heupel and this staff. And, man, he could, he could really spin it. Well, you know, coach's kid, Rob. And the biggest thing with him is just putting on weight. I mean, he weighed less than 170 pounds. And so you'd like, like to see him get a little taller. Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he's he, he just got to fill out. But really, I mean, impressive young man to talk to. And, yeah, I mean, you know, Tennessee's going to have to win some games to, to really be in there. But I, I think he's definitely going to give Heupel and this staff a chance. Well, and I think it was important when you talk about getting guys to campus. And, I mean, it wasn't just about him coming to camp and, and showing himself. Uh, Austin, when we talked to him in Nashville on the state tour, I mean, he didn't know anything about Tennessee. He had been up to Tennessee. His dad had never been up to Tennessee. It was their first experience um, being in Knoxville. And, and I, think, I think his dad liked what he saw. Now they're going to camp at um, Alabama and Texas A&M and Texas and – uh, Georgia. Lot, you know, George, lots of things out there for for them and winning games is going to be important. But I do think that they left a, a favorable impression, uh, which was important for Tennessee to do, because Austin, if it, you know, had he not come up here for camp, I don't think Tennessee would even be in it based on our conversations with, with him uh, when, when we were on the state tour at NBA. I just didn't feel like Tennessee had had any any momentum with him. He, he didn't. He didn't seem to know a whole lot about Tennessee at all when we visited with him out there. Well, I think part of that, too, is just ha having never been here, you yeah. know. Um, uh, just as simple as that. I think getting up here, getting around the coaches, that's the biggest thing that I think is helping Hypo and company is just being able to get around kids. It's just a matter of getting kids to campus at this point. First week, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm on the record – I don't, you know, official visitors are fine this month. I think more, it's more this whole month is ba is really, to me, controlled by how you manage your unofficial visitors. To get Joshua Josephs here over the weekend when he was supposed to be here officially pushes that back. Tennessee's very happy that he pushed that back, gives them more time. But then he comes up here unofficially. You know, managing your unofficials, you know, to me is big. 
you know, you know, when you get big timers on campus, um, Tennessee's had a couple uh, that have rolled through, including the linebacker from uh, Indiana, um, you know, Drake Bowen, who was here, um, you know, on Monday, you know, t- for 23 in the 23 class. You know, managing those unofficials are as important as anything, just because most of the guys that are your top end guys, your high end guys, they're not camping. So that's why, you, like, the campers are fine. And, and, and there's going to be some guys, especially 23s and 24s, maybe even the 25s that aren't offers. But for the most part, it's how you manage those unofficials and then the officials in the month of June. Yep. And Tennessee had a couple of officials in. It seemed like that their first official visits under Josh Heupel were, went well, were organized. Kids seemed to have good things to say about it. And, and they got some quality time with coaches, even though they had camps going on at that time. And I thought the best thing that went, happened to Tennessee was they didn't flood that first weekend, Brent, because it was their first time hosting on Rocky Top, their first time hosting an official visit at Tennessee and the different things that they do. And to have only two kids here and not have a ton of kids here officially, I think it was kind of dipping your toe in the water, seeing what works, what didn't work, and then going from there. I, I expect Tennessee's official visits to get better and better, um, you know, as, as this thing goes along. But I, I thought that first weekend to not have seven or eight guys here and only have two was, was, uh, was smart. Yep, I agree with that 100%. Speaking of official visitors, Rob, basketball's been busy. Um, uh, update everybody kind of what's going on there. I mean, of course, basketball is different. You can do – kids can do uh, official visits as juniors and seniors, so they can double dip on the official visits that way. But uh, Tennessee, again, swimming in the in the deep, deep waters, and uh, those waters are changing, obviously, with the announcement that Coach K is going to only coach one more year. Um, but but Tennessee is still resonating highly with the, the, the top, you know, 15, 20, 25 prospects in the country. Yeah, they had Kassan Jackson here this weekend, a really good-looking shooting guard from out of the Dallas area. I originally thought that – I mean, because Rod Clark had some ties to this, this kid from where uh, Coach Clark had run, run camps, and Kassan had attended some when he was younger, like as young as eighth grade, and really just kind of felt like it was like, you, you know, we like Coach Clark. We're going to take an official, official visit to Tennessee. But, I, don't, I mean, I think Tennessee's way deep in this one now. I think Jackson really liked – not just what he saw from, you know, campus, city, facilities, but really, really liked the vibe he got from the team, from the players, from being around them. You mentioned that more than anything um, about what stood out for him about the trip. He has an older cousin that uh, played for Rick back at, um, at Texas uh, 10, 15 years ago. So, you know, there's somebody in the family that know, knows what you're getting into if, if, you, if you go that route. And um, I just, I just kind of thought that, you know, you get to the defending national champs in Baylor down there. You got Texas with a, one of the hottest young coaches in the country with Chris Beard down there. I thought it would be really tough to pull him out. Now I almost think he's looking to, to leave. I mean, I, I don't know that for sure, but I got that vibe. I certainly got the vibe that he is not afraid to leave. And with that Arkansas uh, in there really heavy and Kentucky also, he, he knows Tyrese Maxey who played at Kentucky a few years ago. Um, so Kentucky's going to be in there, but I think Tennessee is, I think he'll be back as an official visitor in the fall. And I think Tennessee's knee deep in that one. Uh, and the other one, Brandon Miller, the five-star kid from Nashville, from Cane Ridge, just a dynamic six foot seven, six foot eight forward. He's in town as we speak right now on his official visit. What about Mac McClung? Where did, AP, where did he land? I will bring that up for years. I will beat that dead horse until it is a bone. I don't even. I, did, I don't even know if he landed somewhere. I think he just went back to wherever he was. What, oh, Texas that's right. He, he, he stayed at Texas Tech. That's right. He yeah. did do. That. All right. So, second official visitors in now in Miller. What, what else they got coming down the pipe? Uh, they got the Justin Justin Hood. Um, I'm going to botch this uh, hyphenated last name. Justin Hood Shafano. Coming in on Saturday, nice. he's Say it with three. conviction, Rob. With conviction, right. man. Number thirty-two ranked guy in the country. He's a six-four, six-five shooting guard from Montford Academy, powerhouse program, obviously down it down in Florida. Um, plays for Chris Paul's sponsored Nike AAU team, a, a program that, that Justin Ganey has a long history with from his time in, in the Carolinas, from you know being a player at NC State for for working that area. So. Um, 
And B.J. Edwards was supposed to be in, I thought, on the 8th, but he is currently in Las Vegas. Now, I don't know if B.J. got like a late invite, but it's a, big, it's a prestigious camp that, that takes place out there every summer. And uh, But I do expect him to be in. But the, as of now, unless they reschedule something with B.J. for later in the week, um, the next one up will be Hood Shafato. All right. And um, camps, the camp circuit for basketball, you mentioned the Las Vegas camp. Is it, yeah. is it more July? Is it going to be more July? Yeah, July, and it's right now. I haven't seen a plan from the the big shoe outfit. I, I don't, but there is going to be something. And uh, the next the next kind of off campus thing coming up, it'll be the first time coaches can get off campus and see something. You know, the NCAA kind of took some power away from the shoe companies in the last couple of years, and they had, they now have these evaluation periods. But you have to go there with your high school team. You don't go with your AAU team. So. They go. It's like a two, two, two or three day event, and like the best best high schools from North Carolina and Georgia. Those are two that Tennessee will be in attendance. Just play games for, for three days, but it's the actual high school team. So you're not seeing, you know, five high guys with high major offers on one team. You're seeing, you know, the good player you're recruiting and probably, you know, a couple of scrubs. All right, and so that's coming up, and of course they've got their newcomers on campus now. A bit of a normal summer for the for the programs as it is yeah, for I football. Santiago's, I don't think Santiago's back yet. I, I need to double check on that. He was not back this weekend. And is he Kennedy, coming back? Jan will be. Yeah, he's coming. Well, as a, from, from everything I know, he's coming back. Okay. And um, Kennedy Jan will be checking out here in a little while to try out for the nineteen and under national team. Which I'll yeah. be stunned if he. Yep. So that's coming up, and then they'll have their the rest of their summer. Uh, will be much more normal, and we'll have updates on kind of how those guys are looking and progressing as everything gets settled in uh, in that regard. Um, Austin, as for the current football team, uh, had a chance to see some guys kind of bouncing around and and you know hanging out and walking through. It's pretty obvious. Caden Salters put on a little bit of weight since he signed with Tennessee. Obviously, he didn't go through spring practice, but he's certainly. Uh, around um who else has caught your eye in terms of i tell you what rj perry looks like a million dollars yeah, i don't know if he can play I'll but he looks the part that's I'll for sure mention him and ap a young man being you saw you know back uh, seems like forever ago now but william parker griffin he has he has really had a good five or six months he uh, and again same thing you said about perry i don't know if that's going to show up on the field but physically he's he's done some work yeah i mean i agree with you i mean you know rj was a Defensive lineman coming in, they converted him over to the offensive line. Looks good. Rob's right, you know. And I think William Parker Griffin has a chance to earn some playing time this fall. I really do. I think he's that talented. I think they like him a good amount. And so I do think that he has a real shot to uh, earn playing time over the course of the season. I don't know if that equates to playing in the first handful of games, but I think he plays somewhat early. I tell you who, I don't, I don't, he might be forced into action. He probably needs to, and he does need to put on some weight, but uh, Apache Mohan you know, it, it is pretty well put together. And, uh, you know, that to me, that's, you know, the takeaway there, um, you know, as far as a newcomer I've seen. And Joe Milton is a mountain, a mountain. I'm going to I'm I don't know if he's any good hubs. I don't know if he's any good, but he is huge. Yeah, he's a big quarterback. He looks like a defensive had. end. I'm having a brain freeze. Who's the little running back from, or not little, but who's the running back from North Carolina? Speedster. Oh, Jalen Jalen Wright. He yeah. looked, yeah, he he looked good. I thought he looked like he had really, really added some good, very good weight. Well, I don't think you can under, I don't think you can oversell us is the right word. The, the fact that these guys have been here all spring and, and have had a normal off season, um, you know, workout schedule. I mean, remember, I mean, those guys went home last March, you know, and tried to do it on their own until they came back in, in late June. And, and these guys have had, an entire legitimate off season, even though there's been a coaching change, they've had a legitimate off season of work in the weight room. And I think it's shown up for some guys who are playing catch up for what they've just weren't realistically able to get done on their own for three or four months a year ago, because of everything that was going on, you know, around the country. And, and I think that's paying the dividends for sure. A um, couple quick, you know, administrative things here as we head out the door. What, what were your thoughts on the SEC's decision to allow transfers within the conference? I think we all knew that was coming. But did the, the timing, the date that they put on there when you had to declare, did, did that catch 
I, I'm surprised that didn't get more play in, in terms of new of a news item than, than what it did. Because the way I read it, you got to declare before spring practice, right? I mean, yeah. That's the way I read the release. Am I wrong in how I read that? That's what I thought too. I think Matt. that's an I think that's an interesting deal because now kids are going to have to make a decision, and you can't have the well, let's wait and see what happens in spring, Austin, and see if I can move up the depth chart. And then if I don't, then I'll check out. you got to make that decision before you go into spring practice. Well, I, and I think that's the right move because I, if you're going to allow transferring in the conference and um, you know allow immediate eligibility, you have to have some type of rule. You can't even, hey, I, I think that's the smart rule because, you know, that's what a lot of kids are going to do. I mean, look at the – you know, there's been several kids, you know, do that this year uh, and not just the SEC, but other conferences. So um, I think it's a smart rule to, you know, put a little pressure on them, put a timeline on it, so to speak, and don't let them have all, all the power. And also, I mean, the, the football deadline, February 1st, I mean, most kids are not going to wait until February 1st. I mean, they're going to decide, you know, either – over the winter break or early in January, that's going to give you time in recruiting yep. to, you know, to get your numbers right if you need to. Whereas now, I mean, you're screwed the way, you know, the way it's been in the past. I mean, kids can up and leave in the middle of June and, you know, you got roster spots. Now you might not be able to get in on any big time talent that late in the game, but you, you could at least, you know, it's beneficial to programs that way because you, you know what you're, you're going to have an idea of what your scholarship numbers are before signing day. It certainly feels like that was a that date was a bit of a that, that was a compromise with the coaches because we know some coaches were against um, you know transferring within the conference. There was some real hesitation there, and, and I think that this is some way for the coaches to feel like they weren't having to recruit their kids all, all year long, you know, three hundred sixty five days, and to manage those numbers. I think was the biggest thing, Rob. <laughs> I mean, it's a big it's a big win for SEC football coaches because the NCAA rule the deadline is May first, and so for the SEC to back that up three months, that's a I mean that that's a power play by the SEC coaches that I think really works in their favor because they can take transfers you know, for three more months after they know what their rosters are going to look like. Yep, they can. I mean, you know what what they're looking for they're they're going to know what they're looking for in the transfer market before some other schools or know, you know, know what they have to feel or what holes they might have in, in the transfer market uh, with, with the SEC making that move. So uh, I thought that was an interesting news item. And then as we, we wrap it up here, obviously everybody's pretty fired up about the Tennessee baseball team. Um, pretty cool scene. Uh, Tony Vitello certainly got everybody captivated and, and we'll see how quickly Tennessee can get something done to lock him up long-term. But um, everybody and anybody from donor to general fan obviously wants Tony Vitello locked up. And uh, to his credit, he said all the right things and he's played that thing, you know, the right way all the way through. And uh, we'll see how his team does in regional play or in super regional play. Also, his new nickname is my kids, my, my kids' future stepfather. I think after the past couple of weeks, <laughs> he's a very popular human being. There's no question about that. Uh, we'll uh, have plenty of, uh, uh, content leading up to the Super Regional, plenty cover, plenty of coverage from the Super Regional coming up this weekend at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. We'll also have continued ca- coverage of Tennessee's camps on the football front. We'll continue to find every news and note that we can find in football and basketball in terms of summer workouts and how guys are looking and what the vibe and feedback is on things as well. But that's going to do it for this Tuesday edition of the VolQuest.com Uh, podcast presented by our good friends at Blue Water Climate Control. For Austin Price and Rob Lewis, I'm Brent Hubs. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, everybody.